Hi, this lecture is the fourth lecture in the anatomy of the lower extremity and in this lecture we're going to talk about nerves of the lower extremity. This is a very important topic in the exams. A good source that you can use is this book written by myself. Also the first lecture in this series, the anatomy one, which talks about the pelvis and the thigh will be a good source because many of the information that we're going to discuss today were also mentioned in that lecture. The first nerve we're going to talk about is the femoral nerve. Femoral nerve comes from the lumbar roots two, three, and four. So two, three, and four will give the lumbar nerve. Uh, it supplies the quadriceps muscle, uh, the main muscle of the thigh. It supplies the iliacus muscle from the pelvis and also supplies the pectineus and the sartorius muscle. So it supplies the pectineus, the sartorius, iliacus muscle, and the quadriceps muscle. Uh, if you want to differentiate between L3 radiculopathy, L3 is the uh, main root for, uh, for the uh, uh, femoral nerve. So if you'd like to differentiate between femoral nerve palsy and L3 radiculopathy, uh, you can uh, assess the functions of the adductors because the adductors uh, is also supplied by L3, but it's supplied by L3 through the obturator nerve, not the femoral nerve. The femoral nerve is outside the femoral sheath. This, we talked about this in the, uh, in the uh, first part of our uh, anatomy uh, series in the lower extremity. The femoral sheath uh, basically has the um, uh, artery and the vein, uh, but the nerve is outside the sheath. So the nerve is outside the sheath. The femoral sheath has the uh, artery and the vein. Uh, the femoral nerve is basically within the iliopsoas muscle. It supplies the iliacus, as we said, uh, and it is lateral to the femoral sheath. So whenever there is bleeding in the muscle, it will compress the nerve. So um, this one of the scenarios that uh, you can uh, face is a patient with hemophilia that all of a sudden started to develop weakness of the quadriceps. What could be the reason? It can be bleeding into the iliopsoas muscle compressing the nerve. So femoral nerve, L2, 3, and 4, supplies quadriceps femoris, iliacus, pectineus, sartorius. Uh, it is outside the sheath. The sheath has the vein on the artery. It is lateral to them. It is within uh, the iliopsoas muscle. It is lateral to the sheath, and uh, it can be affected by bleeding in the muscle. The sciatic nerve comes from the roots L4, 5, S1, 2, 3. So the sciatic nerve comes from five roots, five roots, 4, 5, lumbar, S1, 2, and 3. So five roots. Remember in the femoral nerve, we said it comes from three roots, L2, 3, and 4, but the sciatic nerve comes from five roots, L4, 5, S1, 2, and 3. The sciatic nerve uh, passes anterior, which means deep to the piriformis muscle. So this is the piriformis, so it's anterior to the piriformis, which means deep. And then it leaves the pelvis from the greater sciatic notch between the piriformis and the superior gemellus. And then it causes it comes superficial, which means posterior. Remember, we're looking at it from the back. So it's first anterior, which means deep to the piriformis and then it comes between the biriformis and the superior gemellus, and it's now posterior, which means superficial to the external rotator, the superior gemellus, obturator internus, and inferior gemellus. Uh, in small cases, it may go through the biriformis. So it, uh, there, if there, sometimes there is uh, abnormalities and it comes through the biriformis, but in most cases, it will come between the biriformis and the superior gemellus and it will go um, the superficial, meaning posterior to the external rotators, and it will, after that, uh, comes posterior to the quadriceps femoris muscle. So it becomes posterior, means it's still superficial to the quadriceps femoris muscle. And then after that, it will be, it will go deep to, which means anterior deep to uh, the, um, the, uh, the biceps femoris muscle. So it goes deep to the bi uh, biceps femoris muscle, and then it will split to the common peroneal and the tibial nerve. So sciatic nerve, five roots, L4, 5, S1, 2, 3. It passes anterior, which means deep to the biriformis muscle, and then go between the biriformis and the external rotators, superior and inferior gemellus and obturator internus, and then still uh, uh, goes uh, distally, uh, superficial to the uh, quadratus femoris muscle, and then after that it will go um, uh, uh, 
uh, deep to the uh, biceps femoris muscles. Uh, this muscle here, it will go deep to the biceps femoris muscle, which means anterior to the bi bi uh, biceps femoris, and gives the two branches, which is the tibial nerve and the common peroneal nerve. One of the commonly asked questions in the exam is the lateral femoral cutaneous nerve. This is um, a cutaneous nerve from the lumbar plexus. It um, passes under the inguinal ligament and then it pierces the fascia lata to become a cutaneous nerve. It lies between the sartorius and the tensor fascia lata muscle and in the upper part of the thigh, it actually it lies within the lateral part of the sartorius sheath. So this nerve here, the lateral cutaneous nerve of the thigh, is an important nerve because it comes into the approaches, the anterior approach of the uh, hip. It lies in between the sartorius and the tensor fascia lata in the upper part. It actually lies in the lateral part of the sartorius sheath. So we said that the sciatic nerve will divide into the tibial nerve and the common peroneal nerve. So let's talk about the tibial nerve now. The tibial nerve will supply all the muscles in the posterior thigh, except the short head of the biceps, which is supplied by the common peroneal nerve. And then it will go to the posterior um, uh, lower leg, uh, to the lower calf, and it will supply all the deep and the superficial muscle. Basically, it will supply the gastrocnemius muscle, the soleus muscle, uh, the posterior tibial muscle, the flexor digitorum muscle, the flexor hallucis muscle, and then it will divide into medial and lateral plantar nerve, which will supply the muscles of the foot. So we have the sciatic nerve giving the tibial nerve, which we discussed in the previous uh, slide, and now it gives also the common peroneal nerve. The common peroneal nerve gives only one muscle in the thigh here, which is the uh, short head of the biceps femoris. So they may ask you a question um, like the tibial nerve gives all the hamstring muscle except, except the a short head of the biceps femoris, which is supplied by the common peroneal nerve. So the common peroneal nerve gives only one muscle in the thigh, which is the uh, short head of the biceps. The common peroneal nerve will um, uh, run along the posterior uh, fibula and um, uh, turn the direction here. Uh, so it becomes a stretched with knee extension and it becomes relaxed with knee flexion. Uh, so if they give you a scenario, um, the patient um, the postoperatively, for example, at the total knee has weak dorsiflexion, what is the first thing to do? The first thing is flexion of the knee. Why? Because when you flex the knee, you relax the common peroneal nerve. Uh, the common peroneal nerve will traverse along the neck of the fibula, and then it will give two branches, the superficial peroneal and deep peroneal. That's why it's called, called the common peroneal, because it will give two peroneals, superficial peroneal and the deep peroneal. Uh, the deep peroneal will supply the anterior muscle of the lower leg. So it will give um, to the tibialis anterior muscle, extensor hallucis, extensor digitorum, uh, and uh, the peroneus tertius muscle and also will go to the foot to give the extensor um, the digitorum brains. Uh, so all these muscles are supplied by the deep peroneal nerve. And in the next slide, we're going to speak about the superficial peroneal nerve. So speak now about superficial peroneal. So we said in the last slide that the common peroneal uh, will give the deep peroneal and the superficial peroneal. The deep peroneal will supply the muscles of the anterior compartment of the lower leg and will end giving cutaneous uh, sensation for the first web space. The superficial peroneal nerve, on the other hand, will supply the muscles of the lateral compartment. So it supplies peroneus longus and brains. Remember, the deep peroneal will supply the anterior compartment, tibialis anterior, extensor digitorum, extensor hallucis, and the peroneus tertius, and it will give the extensor digitorum brains in the foot. While the superficial peroneal will give the lateral compartment, which is peroneus longus and peroneus brevis, and it will end into two dorsal cutaneous branch, the intermediate um, dorsal cutaneous branch and the medial dorsal cutaneous branch. So the medial dorsal cutaneous branch and the intermediate dorsal cutaneous branch, this is the ending of the superficial peroneal. So superficial peroneal will give the muscles of the lateral compartment and then it will end into the medial dorsal branch and the intermediate dorsal branch. It will give the skin of the dorsum of the, um, the foot and the toes, except of course the first web space because it's supplied by continuation of the deep, uh, uh, the, the deep peroneal nerve. Uh, as we uh, talked about in the approaches, uh, the uh, superficial peroneal is at risk in approaches of the, uh, an uh, of the ankle, of the lateral uh, malleolus. Um, it's about, um, it comes from the fascia at about 12 centimeter from the tip of the fibula. 
One of the nerves that are very important, especially in approaches to the foot, is the sural nerve. The sural nerve is actually formed by contribution of both the common peroneal nerve and the tibial nerve. So both the common peroneal and the tibial nerve will give contribution to the sural nerve, and the sural nerve will supply the dorsolateral aspect of the foot. The small saphenous uh, vein lies medial to the nerve. So this is an important landmark in surgical approach in the posterior uh, calf, because when you see the vein, the vein is medial to the nerve. So if you retract the vein lateral, you will be protecting the nerve. So sometimes you, you, you will be asked about this relation. So the vein, it's the small, uh, the short saphenous vein is medial to the sural nerve. And if you would like to protect the nerve, you retract the vein lateral. So the nerve, the sural nerve is by contribution of both common peroneal and uh, tibial nerve. And it goes uh, into the posterior calf, supplies the dorsolateral. And uh, the sural nerve has a certain uh, variation. It can sometimes be uh, two lateral sural, medial sural, or it can be continuation of the medial sural or the lateral sural. But the classic one is the one that we described here. Its contribution of both the common peroneal tibial nerve will give the sural uh, nerve the vein, the, sm the small saphenous is medial to it, and then it goes supplies the posterolateral surface. Another commonly um, asked nerve, which is the Baxter nerve that comes in the exam very often. I would say it comes in every exam. Other names of the Baxter nerve is nerve to abductor digiti quanti or nerve to abductor digiti uh, minimum muscle or first branch of the lateral plantar nerve. First branch of the lateral plantar nerve. So this, uh, this is the first branch of the lateral plantar nerve and it supplies the abductor digiti minimi muscle. So in the uh, lateral plantar nerve, the first branch will go and supply the abductor digiti minimi muscle. And this nerve can be uh, entrapped under the uh, muscles of abductor hallucis. So it can be uh, um, um, have compression under the abductor hallucis muscle. Um, and this happens usually in runners. Uh, so if you get a question on, in, in a runner that's having some heel pain, um, uh, uh, medial heel pain, think about compression of the Baxter nerve. And if this condition can be definitely confused with plantar fasciitis, which is extremely common, the plantar fasciitis. So most of these cases are diagnosed in the beginning as plantar fasciitis. However, how do you differentiate? It's more on the medial, not on the uh, heel itself. And the tapping on the nerve will produce tunnel sign along the nerve. And of course, the MRI will show pictures uh, of a degeneration of the abductor digiti minimi if it has been going for a long time. Remember, what is the muscle that is uh, uh, the compression is the abductor hallucis. The impingement are deep to the abductor hallucis. So if you want to release, you have to release the deep fascia of the abductor hallucis. So the saphenous nerve, this is an important cutaneous branch because it has an important relation to uh, insurgents around the knee. It is the largest cutaneous branch of the femoral nerve. It travels in the abductor canal. And there's two important branches, the infrapatellar branch, this branch here, the infrapatellar branch of the saphenous nerve. It leaves the abductor canal, moves anteromedial. It can be injured in struct in um, midline surges of the knee, uh, like harvesting the patellar ligament in ACL reconstruction. And the other branch is the sartorial branch of the saphenous nerve. This branch um, becomes um, uh, superficial uh, between the gracilis and the sartorius muscle. So uh, one important um, information I'd like to mention here is on the medial side of the knee, you have the, the muscles SGS, sartorius, gracilis, and semitendinosus. So from anterior to posterior, it's SGS, sartorius, gracilis, and semitendinosus. So the nerves becomes superficial between the sartorius and the gracilis. At the level of the knee joint with the knee extended, the nerve is anterior to the semitendinosus. So the nerve is anterior to the semitendinosus and posterior to the sartorius. So if you want to do dissection, it should be anterior to the sartorius. So the nerve comes superficial between the sartorius and gracilis. It is posterior to the sartorius, so the section should be anterior, and at the level of the knee, it's anterior to the semitendinosus. So after we spoke about the common nerve that come in the exam, I'm going to speak briefly about root anatomy of the lower extremity. We're going to speak about that in much more details in the spine, but here just a quick review of the root sup uh, supply for the lower extremity. 
S1 supplies the uh, lateral compartment and the posterior compartment of the lower leg, so peroneus longus and brevis and gastrocnemius soleus complex, in addition also to gluteus maximus. L5, L5, we know that L5 supplies the accessor hallucis longus, we know that from the spine, remember also it supplies gluteus medius. This information here commonly comes in the exam. They may sh show you um, something causing compression of L5 and tell you the patient will have weakness of hip abductor which is gluteus medius. They know that, all of you know that the L5 supply glute, uh, extensor halus is longus, so they push too much on this information, which is the gluteus medius. Remember L5, beside what you know, that it supplies the uh, EHL and the other two extensors, it supplies the gluteus medius. Tibialis anterior, this is the anterior compartment of the lower leg, it's L4. So L4, anterior compartment, L5 will supply the two, uh, extensor, of course, beside the gluteus medius, and S1 will supply the lateral compartment and the posterior compartment. If you want to test for S2, the best thing is perianal sensation. Now, that for the skin sensation, remember that L4, L4 will supply the medial aspect of the foot and the grade 2. So, it will supply the medial aspect of the lower leg and the foot and the grade 2. S1 will supply the fifth toe, the small, the pinky, the small toe. L5 will supply from two to four. So remember, L4 will supply the great toe, the big toe. S1 will supply the uh, small toe, pinky. Between two and four, we'll take from L5. Reflexes, remember, we'll go in that in details in the spine, but just here a quick review. The patellar tendon by L4, the uh, Achilles tendon by S1 and nothing for L5. Again, we're going to uh, uh, say, uh, explain that in details in the spine, but here just a quick review. So S1, lateral compartment, posterior compartment, the gastrocnemius soleus complex. So that's why it's the Achilles tendon by S1. Also, it supplies gluteus maximus. Remember, L5, two extensor beside gluteus medius. Very important. Tibialis anterior muscle, this is anterior compartment, L4. If you want S2, the best thing is perianal sensation, L4, big toe sensation, S1, small toe sensation, L5 from 2 to 4. I hope, thank you for listening to this lecture. I hope it will be uh, beneficial for you in your exam and your uh, clinical uh, work.